All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, I've got a little dystopian hellscape update to bring you this morning while you're enjoying your daily coffee. So, as you know, things aren't great out there in the old economy. Long-term job loss is rising. 60% of small businesses that had closed for COVID are now closing their doors permanently. And millions upon millions of Americans are struggling to pay their rent and make their mortgage as the coronavirus crisis drags on with no end in sight. So, it will be no surprise to you that in this heartless, profit-driven republic, the vultures are beginning to circle. But hey, it's 2020, and modern capitalist America has a new trendy spin on the normal same old, same old story of profiting off human misery. Motherboard is reporting that there's a new hot startup sweeping America that's just like Uber or TaskRabbit, except that the gig is destroying people's lives. Quote, during a time of great economic and general hardship, Civil aims to be essentially Uber, but for evicting people, seizing on a pandemic-driven nosedive in employment and huge uptick in number of people who can't pay their rent, Civil aims to make it easy for landlords to hire process servers and eviction agents as gig workers. There's nothing like the hell circle of enlisting struggling working class people to do the dirty work of tormenting and oppressing other struggling working class people in service of the capitalist class. Isn't it beautiful? The free market at work, just like Ayn Rand, Thomas Jefferson, and God intended. Now here's a look at their website. It declares in what you might easily mistake for empathy, since COVID-19, many Americans fell behind in all aspects before offering this helpful suggestion, be hired as eviction crew. If you click through, you land on this page with cheery corporate teamwork language about tossing all of a family's possessions out onto the curb, upending their entire lives, and creating lifelong traumatic memories for their children. According to Motherboard, Civil is also running ads on Craigslist that say the following, unemployment is at a record high and many cannot or simply are not paying rent and mortgages. We are being contracted by frustrated property owners and banks to secure foreclosed residential properties. Now I know what you're thinking. You're worried that Civil's business model may be threatened because President Trump signed an executive order banning evictions through the end of the year. But don't you worry. Major landlords are finding ways to persist with evictions in spite of that little speed bump. According to Bloomberg News, eviction filing spiked after the CARES Act moratorium expired and jumped again after President Trump signed that executive order. I guess they're hoping to kick a bunch of people out of the street before the order fully takes effect or before tenants come to fully understand their rights. In fact, from the beginning of August to the beginning of September, eviction cases more than quintupled. For those considering jumping into this growing line of work, here's a CNN report on spiking evictions in Houston with a little preview of what joining the civil eviction crew might actually look like. At this apartment, the tenant is an elderly woman who can no longer afford the rent. <laughs> the landlord's mover, Francisco Munoz, works, though he doesn't want to. I have a family... I have a sister, so I have a, you know, my mom, and we never know. Maybe today is her, tomorrow's me, you know. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm more heartbroken for the woman who's facing eviction or for the man who feels he has no choice but to put her out on the street or risk facing his own imminent homelessness. Civil has put a particularly dystopian gig economy Mayor Pete type spin on the whole enterprise. But the truth is, our entire system is constantly enlisting working class people to oppress and police their brethren, whether it's security guards, cops, corrections officers, debt collectors, repo men, and on and on. Our society fosters the exact opposite of solidarity, pitting working class people against each other in a zero-sum struggle for survival. Whether it's politicians stoking resentment towards union workers or manipulating the levers of the government to maintain a permanent class of unemployed or leaning on a myth of scarcity to keep everyone terrified of starving and being kicked down into the street. Do you think the man in that video wants to be doing that job? Of course he doesn't. And this is the whole game of our economic system. Our entire system is structured to make sure that there is never enough to go around. That if you aren't willing to do the most awful work for the most abusive bosses, then you will be denied the basic essentials of life. It's why the greatest and most powerful and most destructive myth in all of America is the myth of scarcity. Homelessness, child poverty, lack of health care, lost wages due to COVID, all easily solved if our leaders decided to make it happen.
But admitting to the bounty at our disposal in a wealthy nation means breaking the spell. It means people realizing how much more they are owed and how much more they deserve. Um, I cannot really fathom a darker news item than this particular one of Uber for evictions. Yeah, it really reminds me of that movie like Up in the Air when they try to sanitize the entire business of firing people at like and making it their worst moments in their lives commoditizable and uh. easier. And that's really what this is. I mean that. It makes it so that you, what corporations do is they take their, it's like the banality of evil, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, oh, you have this Uber for eviction. Sounds so convenient. We have a business problem. Somebody's living in our property and they haven't been able to pay rent. So we just hire this guy, pay him a freelance rate. He gets his contract work. There's no health care involved within any of this, by the way. And then somebody like Mr. Munez has to kick out an elderly woman. People can look back, be like, well, they're not my con. They I contracted it out, whatever. Right. And there's just no accountability all the way up the chain. And at the end of the day, who gets screwed? Um, it's people like that elderly woman. And yeah, I mean, so supposedly we're supposed to have an eviction moratorium, I thought. But that's going to expire someday. And we talked about this here, which is that, look, now with RBG's death, you if you had even an inkling of a hope for economic recovery package, forget about it. I right. haven't even seen a single senator in Washington talk about it. So eventually the rent is going to come due. Like it, it will come due. And we all know what's going to happen then. It's going to be that times a million. It's going to be a business, just like in 2008, when yeah. people just rip stuff, people ripping the copper pipes out of their homes, hoping to resell it. So they don't have to spend two or three more nights in the car. That's the reality. That's what it's going to be for many millions of Americans already to see massive drop off in the amount of unemployment benefits. There's been no new stimulus payments from Congress. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. 30 million people on unemployment. I, you do. I dug into what's going on with the eviction moratorium, which, look, I'm, I'm glad the president yeah. did and I think is going to help a lot of people here in the short term. It does create that financial cliff at the end of the year when, as you said, like eventually the rent is going to come due and landlords are not the most sympathetic people. But there are a lot of small landlords that are just totally hosed at this point as well. But. The way that these evictions are able to move forward is, number one, there are still certain loopholes where you can't kick people out for not paying rent. But there are a set of other things that you can kick people out for. So if you really want to get someone out, they can always gin up something to make it seem like, you know, that this is a worthy eviction. And the other piece is that people have to know, and it's a relatively complicated process, how to avail themselves of this right. And so that's why you saw, actually, after President Trump signed this executive order, there was this massive spike in eviction filings because they're all hoping to get their filings in before people have a chance to realize and activists and nonprofits that help people in this space have a chance to really educate and provide people with resources to be able to avail themselves of this right. So that's why you're actually seeing a massive spike in evictions right now because they're trying to get into the under the wire before people actually understand what's going on. Yeah, I mean, that makes complete sense. And, and again, these are the, some of the most predatory people. But in a way, I almost don't even blame them. I have to blame the system because once again, which is that if we lived in a, in a real country, which took this crisis seriously from the beginning, yep. then we would have made it so that landlords don't go bankrupt and tenants don't get evicted and tenants don't get bankrupt. And you could have, have had it flown all the way up the chain. I think if you go back and you watch some of our coverage from March in the early days, we basically predicted this. We were mm -hmm. like, we are in a, like a demand side recession where mm -hmm. if you can make sure that you start cash and you put it in the hands of somebody all the way down at the chain, then it will flow up to the landlord who kicks it up to Wall Street. And then you don't have to bail out Wall Street. You don't have to bail out the landlord. And you don't have to bail out the homeowner. It would actually cost you 10 times less. Yeah. Now, what's going to happen? When the bill comes due, Wall Street, screwed. The landlords, mass bankruptcy. Then the bank, so we're going to have a bank bailout. Then we're going to need some sort of like commercial real estate bailout. And if you think that cash is ever coming for you, you know, I wish it was, but it's not. Unfortunate. Yeah. All right, Sagar, looking forward to your radar. That's next.